Hey everybody, Dan Bailey here. Today I want to take a look at Luminar 4 and show you the program. Uh, it's been, just been released. A number of the tools in Luminar, especially Luminar 4, are AI based, so artificial intelligence based. So when you slide a slider, uh, the software is looking through a database of thousands of images in order to come up with the best possible looking result. So the whole thing with Luminar, and the reason I like it so much, is that it allows you to get great results in a very short amount of time. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the main interface. So here's the main library screen of Luminar 4. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've got my, you know, I've got a few folders of images that I've imported. Uh, you can sort through those by, you can show all photos. You can sort by uh, month and year. And so here are all the photos I shot in, uh, in April of 2019, this past year. So a variety of photos in there. Um, I can also look at my favorites. So when I scroll down, I can choose any, any photo and I can double click it to open it up. Up here, I've got the image info. I've got camera, basic camera metadata, shutter speed, aperture, uh, ISO, exposure data, lens, uh, date shot, and histogram. Uh, let's go to my favorites. I've got a few photos that I've, I want to show you. We're going to use this photo to run through some of the, uh, some of the tools that are in, in Luminar. So we're going to load this, and we'll see it takes a little bit of time, but there's the looks that have loaded here at the bottom. If you click here at the top, you can opt not to show those, uh, just about screen real estate and, and what kind of work creative work, workflow you want to run from. Uh, let's hide those for now. And we're going to start here, and we're just going to run through the main toolbar here. Uh, on the right here, I've got my tools are broken up into essentials, creative, portrait, and Pro. The first heading here uh, is light, and so we've got our, you know, kind of standard, standard palette of temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, and then some advanced settings with the curves. Uh, we're going to start here with a second one because this is often the best way to start with Luminar 4. This is one of the AI tools. The AI Enhance includes your AI Accent, uh, and oftentimes all you have to do is slide that slider up and that'll immediately give you some pretty good results. Uh, there are a lot of pictures where that's what I do. That, that's all I do. I'll just slide the, I'll begin by sliding the AI accent slider up and see what it looks like. Uh, you can see what's going on here. Uh, we could also do the AI sky enhancer. You can see that the sky enhancer only touches the sky, whereas the AI, AI accent tool, you can see the, the contrast and the color uh, appear in her jacket and also in the sky in the foreground. So, uh, I, yeah, so I recommend using the AI Enhance, or at least starting there, because it, it, oftentimes you can do one slider move and make the best of the image. Uh, if we bring up looks, this down here is the AI Enhance tool. And so simply by clicking that look, it'll load, and you actually got a pretty good looking picture. Uh, I often find that dialing this down a little bit We'll just tone the effect enough just to give you more realistic and slightly less, exagger less exaggerated look. So I, I find that maybe 30 50% uh, is kind of a sweet spot for me. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to, here's the history slide. Let's start over, back to original. Uh, the next one, we're going to talk about a structure. The, the new AI structure is actually a really powerful tool in Luminar 4. This is one of my favorites uh, in the new program. And I think it's going to be the most powerful. It's going to uh, be used quite a bit by a lot of different photographers. Uh, a lot of times when you do structure or sharpening or clarity, it's a global thing. And the problem is, is that you can end up over sharpening your subject, which in this case, I've got a person in my foreground. So what the AI structure tool does is it, it analyzes the scene and it, it kind of separates it into foreground background. And so it sharpens only the background. Uh, I'll just slide it up and show you. So here you can see uh, how the, the background is being sharpened quite a bit, but you'll notice that her face uh, is not being touched at all. So you don't have any over sharpening. You'd have some weird artifacts and edge contrast there that or halos that just don't look very good. Uh, you can also go negative clarity. So if you wanted to blur the background a little bit more, you can do that. Uh, that seems to soften her a little bit more. Um, 
but I have used negative clarity a few times. So we're going to undo that. You can zero it out with this little thing here. Uh, color is your standard saturation vibrance. So no surprises there. Uh, details enhancer. Uh, this can be handy for a lot of situations. Uh, small, medium, and large details. You'll notice that this small details really worked on our face there, pulled out a lot of the detail, which you don't necessarily want in a person, so we can even go negative on that. Uh, medium details, uh, the straps in her pack and her hat, and large details. Uh, looks like uh, part of her jacket in the background. Uh, here's the denoise panel. Um, pretty straightforward. I don't really need any denoising here, but uh, if you need it, there it is. Uh, landscape enhancer is kind of fun. Uh, this is where they combined a few things. So now this is where you'll find the dehaze tool. You'll find golden hour, which I do like a lot. I, I like using golden hour just to add a little bit of twinge of warmth to the photo. And then if you have trees and grass and things, foliage enhancer can uh, can bring out the, the greens in, in those subjects. So foliage hue, so if you had fall, fall colors or uh, you know, Japanese maples over here, so that can, that'll tell you what, what colors to bring out. So we'll kind of match this here. And you'll see we bringing out more greens. Uh, black and white conversion, you know, just converts the picture to black and white. And then these up here, you can see, uh, they kind of simulate different filters for using black and white filters. So this is actually a pretty cool way to, to go to black and white. It's very easy and you can immediately get some great looks. And again, that's one of the things I like about Luminar is you can get great looks just like that, very little time. Let's go from Essentials down to the Creative Palette. AI Sky Replacement is brand new in Luminar 4. And you know, when I first heard about it, I was a little skeptical. I'm, it's replacing skies is not always what I do in my photos, but I do recognize that there are times where uh, maybe you're shooting for a client or you're shooting for stock, uh, or if you just simply want a better looking sky in your picture for whatever reason. So I figure this would be a good way to, to show this off. Uh, when you click this sky selection, you have an, any number of, of skies that are preloaded into the program, but you can also upload your own skies. So if you have a, a, a file of sky images that you've shot, you can do that. But let's try, um, we'll just try blue sky number one. So you hit that and, and there you go. So it brings that up. Now the first thing I see uh, is it actually does a pretty good job of blending the horizon and knowing where to put the sky. And that's where the artificial intelligence comes in. Uh, but there's a couple things wrong with this. Uh, number one, we have the background and in, in out of focus here so therefore the skies wouldn't be in focus, the cloud wouldn't be in focus, that just looks wrong. So when you look down here, you have sky defocus. You just grab that slider and bring it up and you can suddenly match the look of your, uh, look at the rest of the scene. So that actually works really well. Look at some of these other skies real quickly. Got some cirrus clouds and that's matched the defocus that I've done. Um, We've got dramatic skies. Here's uh, sunsets. Uh, the next, the next palette is the portrait palette, and there's some new features here: uh, the AI skin enhancer and the portrait enhancer. And this portrait enhancer has all kinds of different tools. You know, single slider to change a lot of di different parameters. Uh, this is a lot of stuff that you would. If you were a portrait or wedding shooter, you would probably outsource uh, or have someone in your office dedicated to doing retouching. I'm not going to run through this right now, but if you do shoot portraits, uh, this is where you'll find that. So now that I've run through some of the tool palettes and shown you some of the main features included in Luminar 4 and the editing space, uh, I want, just want to run through and give you an idea of how I use the program in my photography. Uh, a lot of times I'm, I'm already starting from a good place with my photos, so I find that I don't tend to need to make big moves and, and lots of adjustments. Uh, sometimes I'm just trying to enhance the scene a little bit, um, 
maybe add some color, add a little bit of sharpening, some structure, um, just a few things, just minor tweaks to make the image pop as a whole. So here's a good example. Uh, we've got this photo. It's it's you know already got great color, you know great scene. Um, it, I think it's fine as is, but we could add a little bit of life to this. Uh, the first thing I do is I, I look down here at the at the looks panel. Uh, the two that come to mind are AI Image Enhancer and Sky Enhancer. Um, we can just start with AI, AI Image Enhancer. So as you can see, that that kind of boosted everything. Uh, that's a little too much for me. So as I said, I like to dial things down, you know, back to about 50 or percent or so. Um, so let's stop here. We'll go 42 percent. So you know, there's there's already a little bit of difference. So the next thing I want to do uh, is, is do a little AI structure. But rather than add structure, uh, I want to take it back a little bit. Uh, but I'll just show you what this does. So if I increase the overall structure, you can see it, it adjusts the background, but it doesn't adjust my rider. Uh, if I go plus on the structure, it makes my rest of my scene sharp. If I pull it back a little bit, then I can I kind of isolate the, the rider a little more against the background because she's already sharp and she's not going to be touched by the structure. So pull that back a little bit. And so yeah, that, might be, that might be all I do. So now if we A and B it, uh, we can see we just made a real minor tweak, just brought up some vibrancy and increased the, increased the uh, overall impact of the image. Uh, the first thing I might do for this is bring up the Essentials panel and go straight to A, High Enhance and you know drag that slider there and that already does an amazing job uh next thing maybe a little little add some ai structure that's gonna add a slight bit of definition to the icebergs back there uh details enhancer uh let's go to full uh, landscape uh foliage enhancer and now you can see that kind of adds a little green here dial that back a little bit and if I want to add a little bit more definition, I can drag the dehay slider up a little bit. And that just adds a little more saturation in the background. So there's before, there's after. So it makes a big difference. And again, it just depends what you're going for. I could go for a completely different look to this photo. Let's go for uh, uh, the dramatic look, the dramatic panel. Um, I could hear this remarkable. I'll go for that, see what that does. And that's a pretty interesting look. So maybe dial it back a little bit. And you can see that, you know, it goes from zero to 100. Uh, I actually think that's pretty cool. And this is a lot of how I use the program. I'll just pull something up that, that catches my eye and just tweak it to how I like it. Because, you know, and it may not look exactly like what I shot, but we're not trying to reproduce the world that we see exactly. We're trying to represent these scenes uh, in such a way that excites our own visual senses and in the hopes that it'll also in incite the imagination of our viewers. So you don't actually need accuracy to evoke a mood in photography. So remember that. So let's go back to this image. Uh, the first thing I do is pull this up and then I'll look down at the, at the looks palette here. Um, not seeing anything that jumps out at me. So we can just go to the edit panel. Uh, we'll start with the essentials, go straight to AI Enhance. Uh, I like to make big moves to see what it does and then dial it back so we can, you know, maybe stop here at 65% or so, 64. Uh, that brings up the image just enough. It uh, doesn't make it too bright. Uh, I want to go minus on the structure here, do some negative structure. So that'll help soften, that'll help soften the background and, and keep these riders nice and sharp, especially this guy out front. Uh, as I can see, if I take structure all the way in the positive area, that just, you know, creates a little bit too much contrast, a little too much busyness going on. If I bring this back a little bit, uh, that makes this guy stand out. So uh, color, let's add a little vibrance. Uh, we'll go to light here. Uh, let's get rid of a little bit of that green. Just drag the tint here down a little bit. Um, that was fast, and and let's go for uh, let's go to details enhancer. 
little bit of small details. I can grab these things in his jersey and the mud splatters on his number plate here. A little bit of medium grabs the, the helmet and some of the bigger details in the jersey. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. Uh, let's look at here. We'll get that's the before, and that's the after. Uh, you know, remarkable difference. A much better image in just a very short amount of time. Would we spend a, a minute on that? Less than two minutes. That's the kind of editing I like to do. I, I want to bring my images to life. Just add what they need, add a little more zing, without spending a whole bunch of time in front of the computer. So I hope that gives you some ideas about the capabilities that are built into Luminar 4, uh, some of the creative options you have, and hopefully uh, in showing you some of the ways that I use the program, I can inspire you or at least give you ideas for how you might adjust your images and some of the tools you might use in your own method. So thanks very much for watching this video. Uh, please leave a comment, please subscribe to my channel, and uh, we'll see you next time.